Hello there guys, it's Joey. Welcome back to I Can't Witch Without and this week it is I Can't Witch Without Frankincense. So just the usual disclaimer at the start of the video, this is not to say you cannot be a witch with en without any of the items mentioned or shown or talked about. These are just items, incenses, resins, herbs, flowers, crystals, etc. that I use regularly within my own practice as well as sharing my experiences with them, my feelings about them, as well as the generalised meaning from two sources to give us a jumping off point. The first being Cunningham's Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs and the second being the Compendium of Herbal Magic by Paul Beryl. So from Cunningham's book Frankincense, the folk names are given as incense, olibans, olibanum, olibanus, masculine fire and planet being sun, deities ra or baal, protection, exorcism, spirituality. Ritual uses, the ancient Egyptians burned frankincense at sunrise to honour ra. To this day it is included in the composition of some incenses used in Catholic churches. Magical uses. When burned frankincense releases powerful vibrations which not only uplift those of the area but drive out all evil and negativity. It is therefore used in incenses of exorcism, protection, purification and consecration. It is also burned to induce visions, aid meditations and is added to sachets for luck, protection and spiritual growth. Rosemary may be used as a substitute for frankincense. I don't know about that myself, but yeah, you go. That's what it claims in the Scott Cunningham book. And from the Magical Compendium, which is the herbal book I would probably recommend if people are interested in knowing the meanings in more depth. Again, given the sun, Herb of Consecration, Herb of Protection, Herb of Purification, Religious Herb, Invocatory 2, Adonis, Apollo, Baal, Demeter, Ra, also called Olibianum. Olibianum. So, the law, with strong associations with the sun, Frankincense has been used to give honour to solar deities. It was powerful and valued herb of the ancients. Its use during the time of the Old Testament is well documented by ancient Hebrew. Frankincense has been associated with Apollo and Adonis. The Romans expanded their use of this incense beyond that of the temple, giving it significance at political occasions as well. In addition, it was used within the Chaldean priesthood and burned by the Babylonians to invoke Baal, their solar deity. It remains an important herb throughout those countries along the eastern end of the Mediterranean. In Egypt, it is heated and blackened. This sticky black substance is used cosmetically. From a modern herbal, we learn the following. According to Herodotus, Frankincense to the amount of a thousand talent weight was offered every year during the Feast of Bel on the great altar for, of his temple in Babylon. The religious use of incense was a common in ancient Persia as in Babylon and Assyria. Herodotus states that the Arabs brought every year to Darius a tribute a thousand talents of frankincense and the modern Parsist of West India still preserve the ritual of incense. Interestingly, frankincense has also been linked with Demeter and several lunar goddesses, believed capable of bringing forth the soul and compassion of the feminine nature of the universe. Frankincense has been highly esteemed in the Western Judeo-Christian religions used in many of their ceremonies. It remains a primary ingredient for ceremonial mixtures within the Roman Catholic Church, carrying on age-old tradition. We can read about its history in a modern herbal. The ceremonial incense of the Jews was compounded of four sweet scents, of which pure frankincense was one, pounded together in equal proportion. It is frequently mentioned in the Pentateuch, Pentateuch, 
toy. I've not I have no idea how you pronounce that. Apologies. Pure frankincense formed part of the meeting the meat offering and was also presented with the shoe bread every Sabbath day. With other spices it was stored in a great chamber of the house of God at Jerusalem. And then for usage Frankincense is used for ritually uh, sorry, the <laughs> brain. Frankincense is used for ritual primarily as an incense. It is one of the best herbs for an offering or sacrifice due to the nature of its harvest. When a special knife is used to cut into the bark of the tree, the sap oozes out and it dries in tear shaped beads which are gathered and processed for the market. It has been used at many solar festivals, particularly Beltane, Lammas and Yule. Or Lun Lunasar, rather than Lammas. Uh, this resin may be burnt or infused in a light tea, making ideal fare for studying the sixes of the minor arcana. Frankincense also shares an affinity with topaz. And I believe topaz is the crystal of the day in my witch book, so that's a bit weird. <laughs> Either will enhance the power of the other. The resin is suited for the consecration of wands and other ritual items associated with self-control, the will and the disciplines of one's ego. It is of particular use for those Leo planets, although some slip into an illusionary state of mind and perceive it enhancing the ego rather than placing one in a humble admiration of all of which is divine. The history and the combination of feminine and masculine energies lend frankincense a singular place among magical herbs. It represents the divine's ability to move into manifestation. Frankincense is often associated with ritual workings to bring success. However, this use of frankincense will only be of benefit when the practitioner is balanced both in the spiritual and the mundane daily life. Of value in ritual, it assists conscious mind in maintaining focus and generates a sense of reverence and respect for the larger world of spirit and the stunning beauty of the manifest universe. Frankincense has a cleansing quality within one's astral self, bringing purification to one's spiritual being, but also providing protection for those who walk in the world of spirit when taking astral journeys. Like I said, the information in this book, the Herbal Magic Compendium, is really, really good. I might have a look at his master book of herbalism. Although not from Amazon. <laughs> anyway, uh, so in front of you are some of the different and main methods in which we can get hold of frankincense. So we have, this is actually frankincense and myrrh because I don't have pure frankincense, incense, stick incense, which is what is burning. And this one is Stamford. And it's one of my favourites, it's really, really beautiful. I have a dilute frankincense essential oil and then some of the resin itself. Oh, it's so good. So, frankincense is probably one of the most accessible resins and probably the one that most people will have heard of in some form or another. I was initially, when I very 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 first started out, a little bit reluctant about it because it did have such a Christian connection in my mind and I it was before I'd really read very much about differing religions before I had embraced, before I had really embarked upon my path and I knew that the the pagan way of life was calling to me and I felt that that was moving me away from any other direction. Um, so at first I was a little bit hesitant but when you look at the history of frankincense it has this really really rich history and I just adore the idea that 
human beings have been using frankincense across time and across culture as a herb of or resin of honoring deity it's been associated with spirit deity and temples th throughout history across all these countries and it's been a currency it's been revered um, people have placed it in offering within the, the Judeo stories, Judeo Christian stories, because of its significance throughout history. I love that it has a definite solar energy to it, but on the other hand, it is also associated with lunar deities, such as Demeter, given here. And I love the idea that the solar and the lunar energies within deity cannot be separated in the same way that the male and the female cannot be separated within deity that they exist interlinked within one another and that is represented on a much smaller scale within the energies of frankincense so we in modern cultural references particularly when we we look at modern paganism have a tendency to say it's father father son male son ma masculine solar energies and f mother moon female lunar energies and it completely ignores a rich history of the fact that the reverse is often true i'm much more familiar with female solar deities than I am male lunar deities but I know male lunar deities do exist but I can talk a little bit more about the solar feminine because uh, the Morrigan in her Maha aspect is considered to be a solar goddess. There are quite a few Celtic solar female goddesses actually. I, th I think I'm right in saying there are more solar female entities within the Celtic pantheon than there are anywhere else but I really do enjoy this notion this feeling that th that is a human construct you know we've decided that this is more masculine and this is more feminine whereas the truth is that they exist within one another and cannot be separated they are the eternal cycle the Ouroboros the infinity symbol they are they are interlinked and cannot be separated and therefore a herb such as frankincense which is so associated with the idea of honoring and offering to ourselves to deity to give offering and and to, to burn incense as an offering and to give things as a gift to deity is so intrinsically to do with deity and spirit and our connection to them that it too has elements of lunar and solar and masculine and feminine being associated with both gods and goddesses and of course lunar and solar energies it's a very pleasing fragrance for most people i don't think I've ever met anybody who really dislikes frankincense that I know of I'm trying to think but I don't think so it has a very light uplifting fragrance and it has this mystical energy all of its own and for me frankincense very much makes a space a temple it can sort of key into your psyche and the scent and the uplifting energy of it really does sort of present the aura of being in a temple and I don't know if that's buried in the subconscious with knowing that frankincense has this rich history of being used in temples and being used to purify out temples and as gift, given in gift and honour to the deities um, whether it's in your mind in my mind and in our mind collectively as being a temple resin and therefore it conjures up images of being in a temple and it can shift the energy within a place because it just 
clears it out, cleanses it, purifies it. Uh, there's sections of these books where it talks about the purification process, although not in as much depth as perhaps I would like. It just has that resonance to really cleanse out anything negative and leave a place purified and ready for magical workings, spiritual workings, etc. But it's interesting that it does have this purification energy which is not explored when I think, if you really think about it, if, if frankincense is a reflection of, of deity within a, within a herb, which it says here, you know, that it is singular um, because it combines feminine and m masculine energies and helps manifest the divine. So if it is so associated with the divine, then it makes very good sense that it can purify out all the sort of human icks that we create and conjure up and, and attract, all the negative energies and ill-wishing and thought form and all that sort of negative energy and ill-wishing and then there's you know specific ill-workings being sent or and that's a very sort of human failing uh, that divinity or deity is not going to have and so therefore it kind of wipes out all that sort of basically wipes all that nonsense out and leaves a space ready for deity free of all those sorts of uh, negative attachments to the mundane life in which we are experiencing And then, it doesn't really talk at length about it being used for protection, but it is a really strong protective herb. Um, and it works beautifully within, particularly incenses, I think really where frankincense really shines is where it is, is burned. And that may be, again, it's rich history of being used as a, incense as well as its solar slash fire connection of course because it is a herb of fire or a herb of of uh, the sun therefore it works best when being engaged with those energies being burnt being offered in in ritual offering that way i've known a lot of witches who are completely in love with frankincense and cannot live without it. I have known people who started their day by having a coffee and burning some frankincense on a charcoal disc. I wouldn't risk that myself. I think I'm a bit too clumsy first thing in the morning for charcoal discs. <laughs> but it really does alter your state of mind, frankincense. Even burning it now, it just it uplifts the spirit, it cleanses out any crap you've had that day, any negativity that's been bothering at you, it's a real surefire way to cleanse yourself and cleanse your space and create your own temple wherever you are. The easiest way to do this of course is with the stick incense such as this one. This is one of my favourites and this is what is burning right now and it's just, it, it creates an energy shift, you can feel it, it's, it's fantastic. I've never actually used it within a tea, so I can't speak to that. <laughs> um, but I do love the idea of it bringing a collectiveness over time, a collectiveness over culture, a collectiveness over country, and a collectiveness over religion or spiritual denomination. I think quite frequently we view these things as how they make us more witchy in, in regards to this video with, with my preferences or perhaps more spiritual within the particular spiritual path that we are connected to and because we love it so much and are so connected to it we do feel that these things 
add to our personal experiences as whichever denomination of path we are walking through. And this is true, it does add to our experiences and it does add to our particular experiences of which path we've chosen because we have chosen it and therefore anything that adds to our experience uh, becomes part and parcel of the experience. But frankincense is one of those herbs or resins which really shows us that we are more connected than we think because people from all walks of life people from across history and across culture and across country and religion have all found joy and honor and spirituality within this particular herb slash resin it's been used for a very similar purpose across all of these things it has that similar energy which people have connected to and felt uh, it was appropriate for an offering. It was an app appropriate offering for the god Ra in Egyptian times and is an appropriate offering now in Catholic churches and to us it's an appropriate offering within incenses within the, the pagan path. And there's something really beautiful and divine about that, that it overarches over all the human nonsense and keys into something which is divine, which is that in heart and spirit people are all the same um, it's just what we choose to do as human beings which differentiates us but in the beginning the spark of life in every single one of us the spark of life being that divine spark is the same and there are certain things in this world which remind us of that and sort of knock at the door of we're not so different, you and I, it's just the choices we've made uh, or along the road and, and our experiences which shape who we are and have changed who we are and who we have decided to be. But in the very, very beginning, when that spark of divinity was there, that, that creation of life, the birth of the soul, however you want to look at it, that's an experience we've all been through and don't remember. <laughs> as we blipped into existence and there is a connectedness there and I love that that runs a little bit a little bit through frankincense because you can just see those connections because of people so it's a very very special herb or resin and I think it's fantastic like that it's going to be it for this video many blessings <laughs>